tensions are once again mounting against Iran, ahead of a crucial report by the UN nuclear watchdog due next week. Uh, it's as Israel tests a new ballistic missile and, and reports uh, that suggest the idea of a military strike on the Islamic Republic is being pushed by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, to discuss the situation, we're now joined live from Buenos Aires uh, by international consultant and author Adrian Salvucci. Uh, good to see you today. Uh, so. We've seen a lot of Western intervention in the region. Uh, where certainly this year, when you think of uh, the whole Arab Spring, there's already a lot of military hardware uh, in the area already in place. How possible is it that an attack on Iran is really being considered? Well, I think we have to be very cautious how we analyze that news. There was a, a front page article in the London Daily Mail yesterday saying that the U.S. and the U.K. were drawing up joint plans to attack Iran. Now, this has been going on for almost four, more than four years now. These permanent threats against Iran on the part of Israel who are calling for a preemptive strike. That's what Mr. Netanyahu said only two days ago. And uh, it all coincides with the debacle of uh, Israel. Israeli uh, attack on southern Lebanon in 2006. So I think we have to be very cautious and basically understand that what Iran is, is the cornerstone of probably what is an ongoing, very tough negotiation to move forward towards a world government where Russia and China are not going to bow in very easily to the Western powers. And Iran is the cornerstone because contrary to Iraq, which was on its own, Saddam Hussein, contrary to Libya and Afghanistan, Iran has definitely a very strong commercial and trade agreement with China, and it has a very strong trade agreement with Russia. And although it's not official, it probably has some sort of military alliance with Russia too. So I think that what we are seeing is uh, we are probably edging closer to what might become a full-fledged war in the region, even a world war where Iran is the cornerstone if it is attacked by Israeli, American, British, or a combination of all three forces in the near future. It is very interesting how, how you bring Russia and China into this, uh, you know, uh, basically describing the, the massive trade agreements uh, between Iran and China and Russia. Certainly, if the West did try and attack Iran, it would certainly uh, flare tempers in, in two of the biggest world powers, that of Russia and China. Now, moments ago, you mentioned the issue of Israel. Um, if Israel did unilaterally attack Iran, as we know, just a few days ago, it test fired this new uh, intercontinental missile. Uh, do you think America would have to support its closest ally? It would have to be involved. America supports Israel unconditionally in the diplomatic, strategic, military, financial spheres. There is a, a, a whole line of thought in America uh, from uh, academic Stephen Walt of uh, uh, Harvard University and John Mearsheimer of Chicago University that says that Zionist influence through APAC, the American-Israeli Public Affairs Commission, is so strong that it has succeeded in making American foreign policy prioritize the national interest of Israel over the national interest of the United States. Now, the United States is not so much bent on war, public opinion, against Iran, but Israel is. So one can envision that Israel is a wild card. It might unilaterally attack Iran. It will then bear a counterattack, which will be ferocious, from Iran against Israel. And then the Western media will plan the whole thing out so that it will drag public opinion from America and Europe to support Israel. And what can happen after that is anybody's guess, because we don't know what Russia will do. We don't know what China China we do will do we don't even know what Pakistan and India will do now and they so, are so, so you bring in you bring in the more regional and even a global perspective here but uh, we, we saw the uh, American backed NATO effort in Libya uh, just over the past week or so we've been seeing the reports uh, from a UN nuclear watchdog about Syria and an alleged nuclear plant there that actually for part the past two decades has been a cotton mill uh, now the UN nuclear watchdog talking about a, a possible strike uh, on Iran uh, just what is the geopolitical global agenda here coming from the West? Well, I think that basically we have a global power elite that is embedded in the United States, embedded in the United Kingdom, and in many countries of Europe, but is not part of the United States, Britain, and the European Union. They are bent on world government, and they use the U.S. military uh, prowess to try to achieve that, and NATO's prowess to try to achieve that. Now, what we have seen in Libya is very different from what can happen with Iran, because uh, Gaddafi committed the same mistake that Saddam Hussein is, and that's being alone 
in the crossfire. But Iran is not Iraq, Iran is not Libya, and things will be very different. And I, I even believe that perhaps in their desperation, they are looking towards a World War III scenario because as happened with World War II, it is an opportunity to kick the chessboard and reshuffle all the cards. And I suppose that this uh, global power elite bent on world government will try to reshuffle all the cards in their favor. Wish we had more time to take this further. Adrian Salpucci, international consultant and author, many thanks. Thank you.